What is the network engineer job stress level on a scale of one to 10? <laughs> um, oh, you guys that are network engineers, you know what I'm, why I'm laughing, right? Um, some days it's a one, some days it's a 22, right? And the challenge, so, so let me answer that question. What is the, the job stress engineer, uh, job stress level of a network engineer? I would say, how experienced are you? And how good is your design and redundancy? Let me give you a, a tip that somebody gave me that I didn't really do for a long time. Uh, two is one, one is none. Test your redundancy, right? In network design, in, in, in job stress level, in job stress, in job stress, right? Um, it is your ability to sleep at night as a network engineer that you will be after. Um, companies, corporations are about making profit. That's what defines them. So when you say, hey, we should have two routers at this office with two internet connections and they go, okay, um, well, there's only 50 people that work at that office. So we don't know if we want to justify the cost of two connections from disparate carriers and things like that. The, the inexperienced network administrator will cause their stress level to go up by going, okay, that sounds good. What they don't realize is the company doesn't know what happens when that connection goes down. You don't even know what happens when that connection goes down because when you get a call in the middle of the night or in the you know 8 a.m. in the morning and you just were up all night doing a deployment the night before or you look at your phone and the alarms are going off and you go, oh my gosh, what do I do? That's when your job, stre job stress is at the 22. You're like, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And the company doesn't remember at that point that you, you made the pitch for redundant, or maybe you didn't. Maybe you were like, hey, I'll be a hero and save them a bunch of money, right? Um, but, but they don't remember that. They just know the office is down and they're paying you to make sure that doesn't happen. Why did it happen, Bob? <laughs> why is the office down? And why are you not on a plane right now fixing that? Like, like people... Like the, the smiling manager doesn't smiling anymore when the connection goes down. And that's what you want to avoid. And that's why I'm saying if you have the experience as a network engineer, and sometimes that can only come from a rite of passage by being that guy that's at a job stress level of 22, right? When the company's like, when, when, you, when you're designing the 50 person office and you're like, hey, here's two routers, two internet connections. And they're like, we don't, we don't want to do that. You have the wherewithal you have the, the peace of mind and you have the, the, the um, I'll just say the, the guts to stand up and be like, well, I'm sorry, that's not a network that I can support. Or you can say, that's not a network I can support because I have a family. I have seven kids. I, you know, when, when, I, when I go to sleep at night, I wanna be able to wake up in the morning and see a router down and be like, oh, wow, that's something we need to get to. Not, not, you know, wife, kids, I can't even talk to you. I'm running out the door, you know, half-dressed, to, you know, toothpaste streaming out of the corner of my mouth. Like, that's so dumb. Like, it's so dumb to live that way. And man, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of stepping on a soapbox right now. If somebody's going to say, yeah, just, just eliminate the redundancy, I, you know, it, it'll save us what? Essentially what they're saying is, well, can, can you please sacrifice your health and your well-being so that we can have a, a, a cheap deployment. You're paying the cost for that. Uh, and, that and that's something, and it, honestly, I struggled with that for a long time. And I finally realized, you know what? I'm the one that is, is dealing with this stress. I'm the one that's now bearing the load because the business wanted to save $1,000 and, and uh, $200 a month on a backup you know, coax connection or something like that. You know, it's just, it, it's, it's so, so that's, that's what, so your stress level is all dependent on how do you design things. The th you know, and, and the, the, the thing that, that's the worst is when you design things poorly and it just happens to work. You, you can roll those dice and it'll work um, for, for sometimes years. And then the dominoes start falling. This happens and that happens. This, and that's where your job stress goes through the roof. And I'm sure it's like that with many other professions. I can just speak to network engineers because it's so immediate. And it's so like, no matter how redundant the servers are, no matter how the failover of AWS works or anything like that, 
none of it matters if the internet connection goes down, right? If if the network is faulty, spanning tree loop happens, you know, like those those kind of things. So, so so, what a great one to end on. That that one's near and dear to my heart. When you're getting into network engineering, I don't know any other way to to get through it than a rite of passage. But just remember, low cost, poor network designs, non redundancy, right? In the end, it's costing you, not the company. And I guess companies like, ah, money, you know, but, but in the end, it's costing you your health, your well-being, and so on and so forth. So um, great, great question.